Hello, welcome to Mel Made. My name's Mel and this is a podcast all about the things that I have made or, as usual, knitted. I am coming to you from the northeast of England. It's beautiful, it's sunny, it's been a bit on and off, a bit rainy and a bit uh, a bit rubbish actually as far as things go the last few weeks but the last two days have been lovely and it is Easter bank holiday weekend it's Easter Saturday and I've been able to be out in the garden um, building a pond and painting fences and if you can see any brown bits on me it'll be I spattered myself with fence stone so I don't know if I've got it all off so I was doing that earlier so if I'm a bit uh, there's little bits on me that's why uh, so yeah I thought I would squeeze in a podcast before I do my yoga and make the tea because I've got quite a few finished objects. I didn't think I had many at first when I was just thinking sort of planning out the the episode and looking at my notes and then I realised I had quite a lot of <laughs> finished objects that I forgot about. So let's get straight into it. As you can probably see I am wearing my completed Maud blouse which is one of the finished objects that I actually forgot I had finished which is a bit weird um, but it, it was maybe about four weeks ago now that I finished it. So this is a design by Fable Knitwear. It is knitted top down with obviously lovely in the round with lovely lace detailing. I love the sleeves, I love the detailing it's knitted in fibre spates cumulus, which is a combination of baby alpaca and silk. It's a bit like a moho equivalent, but it's a little bit thicker. So I only used one strand of the cumulus to knit this. The pattern does call for two strands of mohair and I use the shade Pearl. I think I knitted this in 3.5 millimetre needles. I'll show you the back if I can scooch around because there's rather lovely little detail at the back. Don't know if you can see that. We've got some little pearl buttons and a little keyhole opening, have we? Or oh, it might just be buttons, sorry, not a keyhole opening. <laughs> I was just feeling it there. But yes, I'm really, really happy with the, with this. It's a lovely top to wear at work and it goes nice with smart trousers or jeans if you've got to wear it. Out of work and yeah, I think I talked about this a lot in my other episodes. I don't have any pictures yet of me wearing it, so but if I get one in time, I will pop one in. I also have finished, and I haven't even brought it down with me, I had I did a big blue chunky jumper by Sari Nordland. Oh, what was it called? I'll put it up here and I'll put a picture in here because I finished that last time, told everyone I'd finished it, it was blocking, and then I never put a photo in, so I'll put that in here now as well. That was a really quick knit, really, really good for a beginner made with sort of super chunky or super bulky yarn. I'll put the details up here so that you can see. So that actually is a finished object I didn't even plan on talking about. And I also am very, very happy to say that I have my finished blank sweater. I was, took me ages and ages. I'll just put it on to show you. I've got my little Mel Maid label there for the back. Oh, well made label because I wouldn't be able to tell which way was the back otherwise I have done some short rows for the front but uh, I wouldn't be able to see them if I was getting ready in the morning or in the dark so this is my blank I absolutely love this it's very roomy I'll put a picture up <laughs> in here so you can see me wearing it. And this is a, a loose, I think it's supposed to just be a big neck, but I I wear it normally as a, as a bit of a turtleneck folded over like that. This is a design by Kim Hargreaves. Like I said, it's called The Blank Sweater and you can find it in her form book, her pattern book. She only sells them as books rather than online. It's knitted bottom up in pieces and seamed, which is a method of uh, construction that I'm really comfortable with. And I knitted it in the recommended yarn, which is the Alpaca Classic, which is a combination of alpaca and cotton. I think you've got a tube of cotton and the alpaca's like blown into it. So you can't feel how light it is, but it's very light and it is warm, but it's quite thin. It's, it's not, th the, the yarn's probably like a four ply thickness so but it's fluffy so it's warmer than you'd expect a four ply thickness 
it's better to be but it's not like you know so warm that you can't just wear it I think you know in the summer evenings and things like that and this is what it's for it's for throwing on over whatever I've got on and going out to walk the dog or slob about in the house in and just feel cosy and it fits the bill perfectly and I love that this is so light because because it would it being a really big jumper if I'd used a heavier yarn I think it would have it would drag first of all it would drape probably too much this does drape a bit um but it would drag and drape and it would it would just feel really really heavy so I'm really really pleased with how this turned out and the, I like the sleeves I like the cuffs she often does Kim Hargreaves often does her patterns there's some nice detailing on the cuffs and the uh the neckband and things and this is a well it's only like a knit two sorry knit three pearl two rib but it's just a little bit different and and it's nice and drapey I didn't go down a needle size for the ribbing I could have done and it would still have had the same effect because you don't doubt the master <laughs> because I was thinking Kim Hargreaves you know she's very experienced she's retired now I think she's very very experienced she does gorgeous patterns and if she says to do something really you should do it but I thought oh no I want the sleeves lovely and wide and you know I'm not going to go down needle sizes and it looks fine for the sleeves I did go down a needle size by the end about halfway through the neckband I decided to just decrease a little bit so it didn't splay out like that but when I knitted the well, when I cast on with the bigger needles it looks really nice but I don't know if you can see in the pictures that I've posted there was a, t a point where after I'd blocked it and everything and I was wearing it I realized the bottom was just flaring out just a little bit and it, it it shouldn't have done that it wasn't it didn't look nice so I have sat down I don't know if you can see I'll try and show you I've crocheted an extra line tighter than how it's cast on all the way around the inside it took ages so I just went in and out of the the, the hem the hem the bottom sort of cast on where I went in and out every maybe two or three stitches I did a crochet stitch just pull it in so we've got a more solid edge cast. I've lost, lost some of the stretch, but I don't need stretch because I've knitted a size large. I'm normally a medium. And I could have probably knitted a medium and, you know, it's, it's built for something like 14 inches of positive ease. So or am I exaggerating? It's built for a lot of positive ease. It, it's allowed for within the pattern. But, yeah, the only thing I'd probably change if I did it differently is... I could have knitted it a bit longer this would be a really cool sort of jumper dress to wear with uh, leggings or tights and I would have used the recommended needle size the smaller needle size to cast on and do the cuffs and things with because I do think it, it, it would have turned out great like that um, but no generally I'm really happy this color is I think it's called foliage green and it's a bit darker in real life I think than it's coming out on camera um, it is a bit more dark and foresty. Yeah, but triumph, a triumph. My third finished object, here's me thinking I didn't have any, is my Una socks, which I'm actually wearing. Awkward. Um, I don't know if I can wave my foot at you. Ooh, I could bit. I'll take them off and show you. Um, they were a little bit tight when I first tried them on, but they are lace and they've sort of stretched and your feet block the socks out don't they so that's one of them that is two of them yeah you can see them there it's a really pretty lacy pattern just lovely I mean I think I probably was complaining about these last time because I well no I wasn't because I knitted these two at a time I normally complain about socks that I knit because I don't really like knitting things twice I think I have second sock syndrome massively. Just putting these back on again. Um, yeah, so I knitted these two at a time. That was very successful. It was an enjoyable way to knit socks. I just always get a little bit impatient near the end because you can see how close the wearing the socks is, is, is coming. <laughs> and I just get impatient to get things finished. Let's have a sip of tea. I am drinking. So I've got a pack of fibres at my nose, I think. I am drinking... A cup of pucker love which is rose lavender and chamomile tea and it's absolutely lovely and uh, i annoy everyone at work because <laughs> everyone else drinks a normal tea or coffee and i say i'm going to have a cup of love <laughs> and everyone's just like oh yes of course you are um 
and uh, people say, you know, I don't know how you can drink flowers. I'm like, well, why wouldn't you? They smell so nice. They taste so good. So we'll move on to the whips. This is the Cozy Classic Light by Jessie May Designs. That is as far as I've got. I've only done a few rows this, this month, but I am getting towards picking this one up again. I couldn't do this one while I was working on my blank. And this is going to be more of a summery wear. It's going to be sort of, I think, three quarter length sleeves or full length sleeves, but it's it's finer. It's knitted in superwash merino and it's it's just going to be more. It's a lighter jumper than this is, although this feels like this is a bit more cosy. And I was really wanting to finish this first so I could get more wear out of it before the warmer weather comes in. Fingers crossed we get warmer weather. So but this is a plain stocking stitch now we're going it's knitted top down in the round as you can probably see and we're now going all the way around to the bottom and this will be my tv knitting or knitting in the car project once other things are finished <laughs> i'm knitting this with temple spin in the color dragon sail it's platinum sock 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. Oh, a little bit of my blue, my, my wool from my blue jumper is stuck to that. Yeah. So that one's ongoing. I keep looking at it and thinking about it. The next whip I have is the, this is a present for my friend. I don't think she watches, so we're probably safe. And her birthday's not till November, so extra safe um this is the bunny wish mittens or is it bunny wishes hang on no bunny wish mittens by sarah l kelly i'm very pleased i love the color work as you know i'm really happy about how these are going i had to rip out because i forgot to leave the hole for the thumb i've never knitted mittens before and i'll just unfold this so they start off at the bottom you do some ribbing and then you've got uh, the Latvian braids here, which are a lot easier to do than they look. This is the first time I've done them with colour work. You just, you just purl on the right side and you're going in the round, but you, you wrap the yarns a certain way. So you'll always twist them like anti-clockwise or clockwise, depending on which row you're on. It does explain it really clearly. And you just end up with this beautiful effect that just looks like a plait. It's so fun. And yeah, I've made a little mistake with the bunnies, one of the bunnies eyes. We've got the racing bunnies there. And as you can see, I've done that wrong, but I am not going back to fix that. I am going to embroider the right color over the wrong color at the end. I've also made an absolute, this is a podcast about the mess I make. I've made a mess of the back. This is right. This is the part of the pattern once. I did it wrong. And then I lost the will to live and I decided to do a ver my own variation on this. This is lovely. It's just a little bit more complex and harder to remember. I needed to really look at the pattern and I didn't want to for this side. I thought it doesn't need to be that complicated. Lovely though it is. So I've just decided to keep it like little boxes. So I've sort of made up a pattern there. I'll either correct this with embroidery or leave it in and just tell her that it's quirky and part of <laughs> having a hand knitted present and she won't mind. Um, and because I'm gifting it, I won't look at it forever and go, oh, and I don't think it's on the palm of the hand. So I don't, it's, it's this bit that's the important bit. So really, really enjoying working on these, knitting this on, I think it's two, 2.75 or 2.25. I think it's 2.25 millimetre needles. And I am using Spindrift. Jamieson's of Shetland Spindrift in the colour Camel, which is some I had left over from one of my many colour work cardigans, probably from my Samfrey. And I'm using this as a contrast colour, slightly different weight. It's Pip Colour Work by Bar Ram U, 100% British wool in shade Round Hay 055. So, I might need to get a bit more of this. There's quite a lot of the contrasting of colour one. Was it the contrasting colour? Anyway, really enjoying this. I'm planning to knit one 
and then I'll either knit the other one straight after or I'll wait until close to November and just bash the other one out. Um, I just couldn't wait to try the beautiful bunny rabbit. And I do have, I have pulled this out more than once. The thumb, obviously, I forgot the thumb hole, had to rip back. Um, but as you can see, it's quite an involved design. It's not predictable repeats. You're not really doing it over a large number of stitches, although they are tiny but it's easy to go wrong and then I, I you know on this bit I don't want to make any mistakes I want it to be right because it's the main part so uh yeah if you're hungry for some color work and you want something a bit smaller than a big jumper I recommend this pattern it's it's fun and I think she's gonna love them now my next whip is one that wasn't even or was it on my radar last time I don't think it was I Oh, I should have brought it down to show you. I have had a bit of a problem with my Be Thankful cardigan that I knitted, oh, was it two years ago? It might have been this time last year that I knitted it, actually. And I was, absolutely loved it. It's a design by Lily Kate Makes. And I used her own brand of wool. It's a blend of alpaca and merino, I think. And... Oh, it's called Axis, and I use the, I think it's Adibo, the, the white one, which has a little bit of a halo. And I was really, really happy with the result. I'll put a picture in here, really, really pleased with it. I think I have said before, I had a little bit of an issue with the wool pilling a little bit, but I don't know if that's just me being on. I haven't heard of anyone else having that problem, so it might just have been my luck. And it was getting an awful lot of wear as well. And obviously it was white and, you know, it was getting a bit grubby and bobbly. And um, I put it in the washing machine because I got... I think I've got some curry on it and I put it in the washing machine ages ago and it, it 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 felt it a tiny bit but it looked really nice and it stopped the bobbling and I was like oh this is great I can machine wash this and uh, I did wash it like not a lot but now and again I pop it in the you know and in a protective bag with some wool wash and and you know get it get it washed and you know absolutely beautiful and the other day I put it in the wash and it came out and I don't know I don't think I don't think I did anything different to normal unless the wool had just had enough unless the wool was like are oh, you kidding this is just ridiculous the it shrank it, it massively felted it shrank I looked up how to stretch it out again I used conditioner to, to and, and, and soaked it and then I pinned it and it did go back a little bit to its original shape but it's still smaller and a bit more cropped than I, it was before and I'm sad. It just doesn't. I know it's not right. And and because it's a there's, there's got those balloon sleeves a bit drapey. They're a bit stiffer now. I mean, I, I will still wear it. I think you know on a, on a summer's evening with a with a summer dress. But it's just not as lovely as it was. So I was really sad about that. And I thought I really really need a neutral cardigan knitting to wear with sort of summer dresses and things like that. So I uh, and I knew I wanted another Be Thankful cardigan. It's a really easy pattern. It's quick. It uses Aran weight or worsted weight wool. So I don't like knitting things twice, but it's a testament to this pattern that I will knit this one again. So I thought, yep, yeah, I need a lovely neutral shade. And so I ordered some Cascade 220. Not super wash, although possibly could have done that. But um, that's the colour. I got this. This isn't neutral. What was I thinking? I mean, I do have lots of things that will go with turquoise, but I, it is what I do. I need neutral things and then I buy bright colours and then wonder why nothing goes in my wardrobe. Oh, so this is colour 1004. Cascade 220. I really like this. Well, I've, I've knitted it a bit quite a few times. It's Peruvian Highland wool and it's very soft and squidgy and it's quite reasonably priced as well. I've got four skeins of this and I am knitting the medium size or size three and I only started a few days ago and I have this already. It's knitted bottom up in the, not in the round, but all as one piece because it's a cardigan, it's not going to be in the round, but it's uh, quite cleverly done. So you cast on and you, you go backwards and forwards, there's false sort of seams created by a purl and uh, slip stitch at the sides. Nice sort of look for the seams. And she just has you working round up to the armholes and then you split off and then you do, 
you know, I think it's the right side, then the back, then the left side, and it all does totally make sense and it's explained really, really well. And then you do a three needle bind off at the top for, for the shoulders, so you, and then it creates a nice sort of cool outside seam there. And now I have cast on, picked up stitches around the armhole and I am knitting the sleeve. I should be knitting the sleeve in the round, but I'm not because I'm a lunatic and I don't find sleeves easy to knit in the round. I feel like I'm wrestling with it and I feel like it's a faff. For some people it's a faff to have to knit purl and then seam, but for me it's more of a faff to slide my needles around and magic loop everything and um, because when I like seaming and I like purling. So I just adapted the pattern to knit it flat. It's working really well. I might have done this last time, I can't remember. And I'm nearly at the end of this sleeve. And then I'm just knitting the other sleeve and then I've just got the button band to do. So I do think it'll suit me. It'll go with stuff I've got. I am annoyed with myself. I don't know, I couldn't quite bring myself just to knit another white one because I do have that white one. So maybe I won't knit the same thing twice, really. I've just chosen a different colour. Anyway, I'm going to do my tray per se. My Jennifer Beale. I want to join the Beale along if I can get going and I want to do that in white anyway. Yeah, so that is ongoing. And this is what I will probably finish before I get started again on my cosy light classic because obviously this is very plain it's very easy to do and I know I, I mean I, I was bored to tears of stocking stitch by the time I finished my blank by the way I'm glad this is big stitches um but yeah I've got far too many plain stocking stockinette stocking stitch projects on the go at the moment if you ask me now I have something else to show you this I don't know if I've shown this before if I've repeated myself I'm sorry I'm just have the same conversations over and over again in real life so I've got no chance on a podcast of remembering what I may have said or not said. I knitted this. I don't know if you can see that there. This is my Polina cardigan. I can't remember who it's by but I'll put their name up here. I knitted this quite a while ago, maybe about 18 months ago and it looks lighter here than it does in reality. It's it's knitted in Camaro's Snef Nug, which is, I think it's Danish for snowflake, oh, which is a lovely name. And that is, I think it's mainly alpaca um, yarn. It's moss stitch on the sleeves, I think it is. And there's this gorgeous cabled pattern on the back. Can you see that? Oh, it looks so nice on the camera. You cannot see this pattern in real life. And I love the colour. It's called Bordeaux. It's my colour. It's so soft. But it. this is an example of... I, I did everything wrong in choosing a yarn for this design. It is not one of the recommended yarns, and there's a reason for that. For starters, it's alpaca. Alpaca's very drapey. I, don't, I think it might be unspun. Or if it is spun, it's woolen spun. It's a fluffy yarn. It does not have good stitch definition, which is what you want when you're knitting cables. So the cables don't stand out. It is a very dark colour, so you can't see the lace cable design unless you're on a podcast and looking at yourself in a video, and then apparently you can. And it's also a woolly cardigan with a very deep neckline, which some... There's also food on it there. <laughs> but some people might not mind that, but it really... It also... So with a deep neck neckline, depends on what you've got underneath it, it has to really match. I can't wear it open because I use these crazy buttons. I love these buttons. These are from Buttoned Up UK. They're ceramic, they're beautiful, and I think that I like the contrast. But these mean that I am limited as to what I can wear this with, because obviously if I wore it with a dark green, this would clash. Um, you know, they're such a statement button, they're almost limiting what this garment can do. So I have been thinking for quite a while, I've still got one ball of this left over and I'm thinking of ripping this out completely and possibly knitting, I've forgotten the name of it, it's the really long scarf with the little sleeves at the end that I've got my eye on. I think I've got enough for that. I'll put a picture in there, we'll, we'll put the name up here. I've talked about it before as one of my swips. I'm thinking of ripping this out, knitting that 
and I'm thinking I could use these buttons for this. What do you think? Hang on. I don't know if you can see without the thing there. Will that work, do you think? I think it could work, but I would really appreciate your opinion. A, do I frog this? I think I'm going to anyway. But I'd appreciate what you, you know, if you've got any thoughts, have you ever frogged something like this before? If you'd asked me about, will I frog this a year ago? I'd have gone, no, no, but you now I've forgotten. It's like going into labour. <laughs> you know, I'm at the point now where I've forgotten how awful the labour was and I don't mind having another baby. <laughs> not sure if that's a good metaphor um yeah so i would like your opinion on that and also do you think i should use these buttons if i do rip it out for this or do you think i should go for a wooden button or a metallic sort of more neutral button for my be thankful cardigan answers on a postcard or in the comments but yeah really really good design i think it was quite an expensive pattern but it's very versatile there's loads of you can have short sleeves long sleeves um you can knit the body shorter longer um i'm pleased i've got it and i was inspired to knit this because um stitching over the days podcast i love i love that um she's not broadcasting at the moment but she knitted one of these and i think it was in pink for, for one of her, her to over her dresses or her skirt and it, it looked really really nice but she used I think a worsted fat you know three ply sort of yarn where you could act in a light colour where you could see the cables and yeah it was gorgeous I think it's quite knits up quite quickly um so yeah I recommend the pattern I think it's one that you could keep and you could knit a summer top out of it as well as maybe a winter cardigan so that's worth worth knowing about but it is one of my least worn garments and it's a shame with such gorgeous uh, yarn and I think I would like to make it into something that I would just wear more often. Swips. I have my soon to be whips. Now one is a previous whip that is coming back out of hibernation to be a full blown, fully blown whip again. Da -da. I am getting in the mood because it's nicer weather for my sea glass tea it she he she's been in hibernation all winter i put her away in a cupboard in a big bag with all the little odds and ends of wool a bit creased and a total mess at the back but i don't care right i should have do you know what i should have made the joining thing be at the oh have i done it i was saying the side should be the seam should be the joining bit and i have changed it so it's a bit messy there. The, the pattern does give you advice on how to avoid that mess. So I might it might sort itself out with blocking. I'll, I'll jiggle about with it. Um, but then, you know, it does say move the seam to the side after you get underneath the underarms. This is a pattern by Wool and Pine. I think it's quite a well-known pattern. And I just love how scrappy it is and how little bits of wool and colour can sort of just peep out at you. You're knitting one by one colour work essentially all the way down and you just choose what two colours to do next and I really enjoy this. It does need some attention because you've got to knit, around, knit, knit one row and then think right, what am I going to do the next row and always have your eye on like what balls are in line, what colours haven't I used recently. Um, that isn't a problem but it's it's one that it's not totally mindless but it, it's got some interest to it so I mean I, I really enjoy getting that out and it is one that I have to knit at home because I've got so many faffy bits of wool to carry around for it um, so it's not that portable I've, I've even got some I'm really pleased I've even got the sparkly one I've got nature's luxury yarn where I knitted my friend a, a little scarf and some of that can you see that little sparkles I don't know if it shows up on camera um so yeah that's obviously knitted in the round top down done the yoke and now i have the body and i think it's going to be a short sleeve t-shirt that's all i'm after and i think it'll be really fun nice top i'm looking forward to starting work on this again and it's obviously blue based because a lot of my wools are blue although i appear to be going through a bit of a green phase at the moment not like picasso but yeah, it's great because you can just use any old sock yarn or anything and just, yeah, just 
Oh, so much fun. So that is coming out of hibernation. My grandma's knitting bag, God rest her soul. God bless her. And I've got another plan. As if I didn't have enough wool and garments and all lined up in my queue. I've got the paid, I think the paid in dress is of Shirley Payden, or paid in dress. I've got a dress that I want to knit in grey by Shirley Payden. I've got a bralette pattern I want to knit. Um, <laughs> and I've got the wool for that. I've got the wool for my Naskirgla. I can't pronounce it, but I've discussed this all before in previous swips. I've got that all lined up. And I've got my eye on something else because I like, I'm like a magpie. There's nothing wrong with me. I just keep, oh, look over that, look over there, look over there. I've decided I really need, I've been going to the gym a lot, I've doing my yoga a lot, and I'm always putting on this old sort of zip top that I got from Georgia Asda about 15 years ago. It's just great and it does what it, it does its job. It's not very warm, it's not very fun, but it's just like zip, you know, plastic zip, easy, put it on, it's great, it goes with everything and off I go. And I'd really like a home knitted, hand knitted top, zippy hoodie top for the gym for going to and fro and for putting over my gym clothes if I'm cooling up, um, cooling up or warming down, warming up or cooling down. And I saw this design, I'll put it, a picture in there. It is, oh my goodness, I haven't got it in front of me. I will put it in writing who the designer is and what the design is called. And for the wool, I've seen this, after saying it's grey, it goes with everything. I've seen this like crazy hot pink mix up yarn. I'll put it on here again with the name because it's popped out of my head, although it's in my basket, I think on Wool Warehouse, if I can justify that this month. And I've seen that and I'm just thinking I could be sensible. I could go for like a more of a muted mix, but I've got pink, pink trainers. And I've, I do like the odd hot pink thing thrown in there. I don't know if you remember, I did my hot pink, uh, like, it's called the yoga wrap top actually for the summer last summer in cotton and it was just fun because I've got some hot pink shoes and I'm like <laughs> I seem to be popping a bit of brights uh keep sneaking into my wardrobe I used to be very muted but I'm getting a lot more flamboyant in my old age yeah so that could you know probably I'll 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 do the next episode and I'll be halfway through it probably going yes yes this jumped the queue we'll see and I don't know if I can justify buying more wool when I already have plenty of wool so we'll we'll see whether common sense wins out over insanity and uh, <laughs> we'll find out next time and that's it really for the crazy knitting chat I mean life wise things are fine considering I think last time yes I think last time I broadcast that was when like my partner had cracked his elbow in a car accident and I'd been ill and my car had been broken into. Nothing like that's happened recently. Touch wood, touch wood. It's all been okay. Um, the, the, my dog keeps make, waking me up at night because he's got something wrong with his insides and he keeps needing the toilet. So that's fun. That's not a very nice thing to share. I might cut that out. <laughs> um, and I've just dug a pond for the garden. So it's a very middle-aged bank holiday weekend whilst my partner works because he works in hospitality so he's he's often busy at the weekends and I'm gleefully taking the time to knit and potter and do the garden. Oh, I made some homemade hot cross buns for the first time and I was really proud of them and I took them into work and they were very well received and that, that was just I used the BBC good food recipe I think in conjunction with that poor Hollywood um from British Bake Off him and he it was a very a bit of a faff on the recipe but oh they were so nice so I'm, I might start doing those every Easter really worth the effort and I'm just enjoying a few days off work um going to a christening tomorrow yeah just uh just having a lovely weekend I hope you're all having a really lovely bank holiday weekend or just a lovely weekend if you are not in the UK have an Easter bank holiday weekend. I don't I don't know if everybody has them across the world or whether it's just us. It's probably just us. Um 
but yeah I hope you're getting to knit on all of the things that that make you love and feed the insane parts of your brain because uh, we've all got a little bit of madness in us haven't we and uh, it can be very fun to embrace it especially when that involves knitting so thank you very much for watching if you want to find me on Instagram I could be found at melliart13 on Instagram on Ravelry I'm Melly Art. And if you are watching this and you've not subscribed and you think you'd like to watch again, please do press subscribe because it really, really helps my channel. Thank you very much and I will see you next time. Bye.